Okay, the, after that excursion into the concrete representations for sparse tensors um, and how they all can be viewed as specializations or concrete representations for the abstract fiber tree representation of a tensor. I want to return to the problem of representing the scheduling in space and time of um, activity in a um, accelerator so that we can provide a mapping for an accelerator independent of whether it's operating on dense data or sparse data or a compressed or uncompressed representation of the data. So uh, going back to our very simple uh, representation of a, um, uh, a tensor. So I'm going to talk about a 1D tensor whose rank name is H. And I'm going to show how you can represent um, a traversal of that. I'm going to do a very simple operation here, which is simply to sum the payloads or values of every element of the fiber. So I write this loop as sum equals zero, start with a, a value of zero, and then I'm going to iterate over the fiber T because if I have a tensor um, with one rank, I'm actually, uh, equi it's equivalent to um, having that fi the top, the fiber of the top rank. So I have an iterator um, that is generated by repeated calls to get next. And so get next is well defined for my fiber tree. And I know from my previous section that I can do a get next um, on any data representation. The only difference will be what is the cost. And figuring out the cost is going to be the responsibility of the model uh, for a given uh, scheduling of the computation. And what does the <clears throat> get next return? Each, retu each iteration returns a coordinate payload tuple. And so in this computation, I actually don't care about the, um, the coordinate, but I do care about the value. And so we're going to use a, you know, a similar convention to what we used before. The coordinate is like the index that we used to use for accessing um, data in uncompressed dense data structures. And why was that sensible? And that it, it was because all of the work we did on dense were essentially, like I said, an uncompressed data representation. And for an uncompressed data representation, the coordinate and the position are the same. And so we're actually getting back all of the coordinates, we're traversing all the coordinates in that open range that we typically wrote. And, but, but if we had the coordinate, it was still easy to make the access because we simply use the coordinate that, as the position. But we, in this case, um, are going to talk about the value. And so we get back the value associated with each, with each element of the fiber, and I can add them together. If I think about that in terms of what is happening in the fiber tree, I'm starting with an iteration through the, the fiber. I start with position zero. I get back coordinate zero over here and value one, and I create the sum. I can then go to the next position in the fiber, and I now at this position, I have coordinate 5 and value 4, which I can add into my sum. I then move to the thir second position, uh, third position, position 2, uh, coordinate 8, value 2, and add it into my sum. And finally, the last position, the fourth position, position 3, um, I have my coordinate 9 and my value 3. So that was a very simple case. But just like 
Before, when we when we showed the loop nest for a particular computation, we also could show what the hardware corresponding to that was. In this case, we're going to have a memory here, a storage structure, which is holding the tensor T, the dotted dashed line around it. I'm using to represent that this is holding a compressed representation. And so in order to traverse it, I want to input each position. And so I have something that's called a PGen or position generator. It's going to generate the sequence of positions. The storage array here is going to generate a payload, which is my TVAL. I run it into an adder where I keep on going around um, adding the results. And so go through the same sequence, T position 0, T position 1, 2, 3, adding up the sums. And then presumably somehow we know that we reach the end and we tell, uh, we tell this computation that, that it's done and generate the result. OK, slightly more complicated example. What if we want to do a traversal of a two-dimensional tensor? OK, so now the outer loop here, the outer for loop, is going to be traversing that single fiber in the top rank of the tree, the single fiber in the top rank of the tree. However, when it returns its coordinate and payload, what is the payload of the first coordinate here? It is a fiber in the next rank. And so each iteration returns a coordinate and payload tuple. However, they're different in the sense that the coordinate payload, the payload in particular from that top rank is a uh, is a reference to a fiber in the next rank, and so therefore, in my next iteration, sorry, in my next for loop, I can traverse that fiber, returning a w coordinate, so small letter corresponding to the to the name of the rank, and a value, and so uh, if I just want to sum together. All the, all the elements of this rank two tensor, I can just get those T vales and add them into, into sum. And so the process that I'm gonna go through is I'm at the outer loop, I get T position zero and H zero. I now start in the inner loop. And so now I, I'm still at that same T position and H value but my th position is zero, and now I am at coordinate zero, and I have value a. And in the next step, I'm working on the next position of the first fiber in the second rank, and I have coordinate two and value c, and I can continue on. When I go back to the top loop, I'm now at position one in the top fiber, it's coordinate two, and I'm pointing at the next fiber, continue on. And just like we had before, there is a corresponding hardware associated with that loop nest representation. In this case, I have um, two storage arrays, one for the top fiber, or the fiber in the top rank, and that one looks just like we were doing before, except for what's coming out of it is information which is used to configure this position generator that is saying, where is the fiber that I want to access here? And then I step through that fiber generating the values. Just for reference, compare that representation generically for any concrete representation of the 2D tensor with the code for a um, CSR style traversal uh, where you have to traverse through the cool uncompressed oh sorry so so what you're seeing here is for that top uncompressed rank 
the position is equal to the coordinate. If I can get the coordinate out, I also um, then have to traverse the inner where I have to say, well, where is the start of the fiber? What is its length, which I computed? I actually don't use the, the uh, coordinates in the, in the second rank, but you would have to be able to get that out if you, if you wanted it. Um, so I believe that, that you can see that, that not having to worry about the concrete representation of your data structure allows you to express information about the scheduling and uh, in space and time or essentially the mapping of the computation um, in, a, in a much more uh, compact and, and maybe even easier to understand representation. The time loop model then uses that data flow internally with knowledge of the actual concrete representation that you'd like to use in a particular accelerator in order to calculate the latency or number of cycles and energy associated with a computation of a particular workload.